Okay, continuing on with simplifying equations uh, in order to solve, so simplifying expressions to solve equations, let's go ahead and work a problem that looks like this. 2 plus 3 parentheses x minus 5 equals 4 parentheses x minus 1. Now remember, the goal is to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign, so we've got to, we've got to eliminate these parentheses here, so we're going to use our distributive property. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to carry this 2 down plus, I'm going to distribute 3 into this. 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Because negative times positive gives me negative. 3 times 5 is 15. That's on the left. Equals. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative times positive gives me negative. So that's not too bad. Um, now let's go ahead and, and clean this up. Um, let's see here. Let's take 2 minus 15. We have a 2 and we have a negative 15. Um, so I'm going to carry my 3x down. 2 minus 15 is negative 13. And I'm just going to carry everything on the right exactly as it as it was. Now I need to move the 4x over here and the 13 I need to move it over there. So in order to move the 4x first I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides because I've got a positive 4x going on and that's going to cause this to drop out. So I've got 3x minus 13 minus 4x equals 4x minus 4x is 0. I'm not going to write it. I'm going to just put negative 4 here. Now I've got to collect these terms. 3x minus 4x is negative x. And now that's going to be minus 13. Haven't changed that. Equals negative 4. Now let's move the 13 over that away. Okay. In order to do that, I'm going to add 13 to both sides because I've got a minus going on here. When I add 13 to the left, 13 is going to drop away because negative 13 plus positive 13 is 0. So I'm going to be left with negative x equals negative 4 plus 13. Okay, And that is simply going to be equal to 9 because 13 minus 4 is 9. So I've got negative x equals 9. Now, I want something that says x equals whatever. I don't want this negative here. And remember, this negative basically means negative 1 times x. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 like this, because the opposite of this multiplication is division. And that's going to just make this x equals negative 9. Why? Because negative 1 divided by negative 1 gives me positive 1. That's how I turned it into positive x. 9 divided by negative 1 gives me negative 9. So it looks like a lot of steps, you see here, but it, it's really not. I mean, it looks very, very complicated, but that's because we just took every step in, in sequence. We expanded this out to here. We expanded this out to here. I added the 2 and the 15, and then we moved the 4x over by doing a subtraction, combine these terms, move the 13 over there, combine those terms, and then we just simply had to divide by negative 1 to get, to get the sign to look right. Okay. Let's see. Let's do Let's do one that looks like 3 parentheses t minus 7 over 2 equals t minus 6. Okay? Now, we've got 3 times this thing in parentheses, and then we've got a 2 on the bottom, and then we've got t minus 6 over here. So there's a couple of things that aren't exactly pretty here. Um, I could distribute this 3 in here first. I could do that. But personally, I'm going to go ahead and try to clear this 2 out first. Anytime you see a fraction in the equations, generally the rule of thumb is go ahead and clear the fractions first. You don't have to. You could do it later, but I like to go ahead and clear them out first. So I've got a, a, a basically a 2 on the bottom. That's a division. So the opposite of division is multiplication. So the way to get um, rid of that 2 there is to simply multiply by 2. When I multiply by 2 on the left, I'm going to have a 2 out here, and it's going to cancel, because 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I'm just going to write 3 parentheses t minus 7 equals 2 parentheses t minus 6. 
All I did between this step and this step is multiply by 2 on both sides. On the left, multiplying by 2 caused the 2 to cancel with this 2. On the right, I have a 2. And notice I put some parentheses because the 2 is multiplied by the entire quantity. It's multiplied by everything. So you have to, to put parentheses there. Now we can simplify. Let's go ahead and distribute this 3 in. 3 times 10 is 3t minus 7 times 3 is 21 because negative times positive uh, negative equals 2 times t is 2t um, and 2 times negative 6 is negative 12 okay okay so it's not uh, not too bad now let's go ahead and move this 2 over here 2t rather let's move this 2t over here to get the t's by themselves how do I do that well I'm gonna subtract 2t from both sides on the right that's gonna cause the 2t to disappear on the left, I'm going to actually have a subtraction. So let me carry it down. 3t minus 21 minus 2t equals 2t minus 2t is 0, so I'm not going to write it, minus 12. All I did was subtract 2t from both sides. 3t minus 2t is 1t, which is just simply t minus 21 equals negative 12. So I'm going to continue this way. And then I gotta move this negative 21, I gotta move it over here, and I'm gonna do that by adding 21, because that's the opposite of the subtraction. So on the left, I'm gonna be left with t. The 21 goes away, because I'm adding 21, equals 21, as I'm moving it over, minus 12. And 21 minus 12 is simply 9. So t is equal to 9. So all you do is you, you go through it and you just find the opposite. You do the opposite, you know, as you go through it. That's, that's pretty much it. And I'm trying to do a variety of problems. And, and, you know, eventually, if you don't get this so far, if you're just looking at it and you're like, man, I don't know what to do. You, do, you learn this stuff by working examples. That is how you learn math. Um, lectures, you know, you could, be, you could lecture about it until you're, you're, you're deaf but it's not going to actually help you <laughs> if you don't work any problems. So let's continue. Let's do one that looks like x, parentheses, 2x minus 3 equals 2x squared plus 15, like that. And again, we want to solve for x. So let's start by distributing here. Generally, I start with distributing unless I have fractions first. So let's start with x. x times 2x is 2, because the 2 is, is there. And then you've got x times x, which is simply x squared. Don't forget to look for your exponents. Because when I multiply x times x, I just add the exponents. Um, so I've got an x to the 1 here and x to the 1 here. 1 plus 1 is 2. Um, or you can just think of it as you know x times x is x squared. That's the definition. So you write that down. And then x times negative 3 is simply negative 3x. So that's, that's how that distributes in. And that's equal to, and I'm not going to even change this stuff on the right, 2x squared plus 15. I'm doing a lot of rewrites here, but you know, as you get better at it, you, you can sort of skip steps. It just can get dangerous after a while. Now, one thing I want to point out, I cannot do anything with this... Uh, with this 2x squared minus 3x. I really can't do anything with that. And the reason is I've got different terms going on in different places. Okay? I can't add the 2x squared and the 3x. I can't subtract them because they have different base terms. They have this has an x squared and this has an x. So don't start trying to subtract or add 2x squared and 3x. You just, it's like uh, apple plus orange. You can't do anything more than that. Okay, so let's just think about it and let's see what happens. But I, I do have a 2x squared over here. Okay, so let me go ahead and try to move that 2x squared over here and see what happens. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to subtract 2x squared from both sides of this equation and you're going to see that something neat is going to happen here. I'm going to subtract 2x squared from this side. 2x squared minus 3x minus 2x squared is equal to 2x squared minus 2x squared 
plus 15. All I did was subtract 2x squared from both sides. Well, this 2x squared goes out with this 2x squared. They go to 0 because 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. Same thing here. This goes to 0. Wow, look at that. The x squareds dropped out of the equation. What are we left with? Minus 3x here equals 15. So now I've got something I can solve. I can solve for x by dividing by negative 3 because um, I want to get x by itself and the opposite of this multiplication is a division. So I'm going to divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. This goes out to 1 because negative 3 over 3 is 1. So I'm left with x is equal to 15 over negative 3 is negative 5. Positive divided by negative is negative. So I've got a negative 5 there. Now, I'm just going to tell you that this problem was designed so that these x squareds here, they're the same on both sides of the equal sign. And you can, you, can, um, you can get rid of them. Because we haven't yet learned how to solve an equation when they don't cancel yet. I mean, all the equations we have learned, if, you, if you've really been paying attention, all of the equations that we know how to solve so far are of the form, you know, with an x and then something on the right. You beat it into shape into that form and then you can get x by itself. But when, but when you have x squareds like that, it's not so easy. Now, in this problem, they happen to cancel out, so it's like no problem. But uh, later on, we will be solving equations with x squared there where it doesn't drop out, where it does not cancel. Those are called polynomials, and we will be actually doing polynomials till we're blue in the face, to be truthful. Okay, let's do a times a plus 2 equals a times a minus 4 plus 16. Let's go ahead and distribute our a's in. We've got a lot of a's. We want to collect them. So a times a is a squared, okay? Because you've got a, a to the 1 here and a to the 1 here. And when you multiply exponents like that with the same base, you can add the, the exponent. So 1 plus 1 is 2, so we've got a squared. And you can go back to the exponent uh, um, uh, exercise, if you like. Plus a times 2 is just simply 2a, okay? Normally write it with the number first. Equals a times a is a squared. And um, a times negative 4 is negative 4a. And then I'm just going to carry my plus 16. Now notice, I have the same thing. I have a squareds, but they're on, the same, they're on both sides of the equation, and they have the same coefficient. In this case, the coefficient is 1. So I can tell you, without doing anything else, this is going to go out with this right away. Because you can think of this, again, going back to the scale analogy. You know, you've got a scale here. And I've got one lump of sugar, and I've got another lump of sugar, and another lump, lump of sugar here, and another lump of sugar. Well, these a squareds are kind of like this lump here and this lump here. Right now, the thing's balanced. And I can go ahead and take both of them off. I can take that a squared off, and I can take that a squared off, and the scale is still balanced. Because I have equal numbers of something on both sides, um, I can just get rid of them. You know, it makes common sense with the, with the scale that you can get rid of them, but mathematically what happens is, if you subtract a squared from both sides of this equation, they, this will give you a squared minus a squared, so it drops out, and this gives you a squared minus a squared, so it drops out. Any common terms on both sides of the equation are going to end up dropping out. So we're left with 2a equals negative 4a plus 16. So let's move this 4a over here, this negative 4a. The opposite of this negative is uh, which is kind of like a subtraction is going to be addition so I'm going to add 4a to both sides 2a plus 4a equals and then minus 4a plus 4a is going to give me 0 so I'm not going to even write it so it's just going to equal 16 2a plus 4a is 6a because these are like terms and I just add the coefficients 2 plus 4 is 6 equals 16 and then I've got a 6a, which is multiplication. So in order to get a by itself, I simply need to do the opposite, which is dividing by 6. On the left, the 6s are going to cancel. That's why I did it in the first place. I'm going to be left with a is equal to 16 over 6. And I can simplify this fraction because these are both even numbers. And 2 will go into both of these numbers. Um, 
So what I say is this is equal to, and then 16 divided by 2 is 8. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the answer is 8 thirds. And that is the solution to that equation. If you were to take 8 thirds and put it into this A and this A and this A and this A and crunch all that out with your calculator, you would see that the left-hand side would equal the right-hand side. Um, just like that. Now these are fun problems. And you know, for the near term, you're going to see that all of the A squareds are going to just totally cancel out. It's just going to be the way it's going to be in the near term. Okay, we're rapidly getting to the end of this lesson. I want to do two more problems that I think are kind of neat. Um, let's say we have x parentheses 2x minus 8 over 2 equals x times x plus 2. Okay, I have a fraction here. I have this 2. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that 2. And this is a division, division by 2, so the opposite of that is multiplication by 2. So I'm going to multiply this side by 2 and multiply this side by 2. On the left, I'm going to have a 2 out here, which is going to cancel, so I'm not even going to have to write it. So I'm going to carry this down the left. I've got x, parentheses 2x minus 8, equals, and I multiply both sides by 2, so I've got a, this whole stuff on the right times 2, which is just 2x, parentheses x plus 2. 2. All I did was take this and put a 2 out front because it's multiplied by 2. On the left, the 2 went away because I multiplied by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now let's do our distributive stuff. Let's distribute these things in. x times 2x is 2x squared from before. x times x is x squared minus 8 times x is 8x on the left equals 2x times x is 2x squared plus 2 times 2 is 4, and then you've got an x there, so it's 4x. 2x times 2 is 4x. Okay? Now notice I've got a 2x squared here, and a positive 2x squared here, and a positive 2x squared here. I know, I know right away these are going to basically go away. If I were to subtract 2x squared from both sides of this equation, I would be left with a, this would cancel this out, and it would cancel that out, so they just disappear completely. They're not even a factor anymore. So I'm left with negative 8x, equals 4x. Okay. So let's move um, the 4x over here. So how do I do that? I subtract 4x from both sides. So I've got negative 8x minus 4x equals, and then 4x minus 4x is simply 0. So I've just moved this over this way. Now I'm going to combine like terms. Negative 8x minus 4x is negative 12x equals 0. Because you know, negative you know, minus a negative, answer is going to be negative, and then 8 plus 4 is 12. Now here's the cute part. In order to get x by itself, I need to divide both sides by negative 12. And divide this by negative 12. 0 divided by anything, 0. So the answer is simply going to be 0. Because this gets rid of the 12s and then 0 divided by 12 is 0. And if you were to take 0 and put it into here, 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 and here and multiply all this stuff out, in fact you can see if x is 0, I've got an x here. Let's say this is now 0. Well, it doesn't matter what's in here. x times this, is, if this is 0, is always going to give you 0. And on this side, if I put a 0 here, it doesn't matter what's in here. 0 times anything is 0. So when x is 0, the left and the right are equal, and they are equal to 0. Okay, we've got one more problem that I want to do before calling this lesson done. And here it is. Okay, it's going to be kind of kind of a, a big problem. X parentheses 4x plus 3 plus 2, parentheses x squared, plus 9. All this stuff is going to be divided by 2, equals 3x parentheses x plus 2. It's kind of big, but uh, it's really not going to be that bad. First, I'm going to get rid of the 2. I'm going to multiply the left by 2, 
and that, that means that the 2's are going to go away, and the right I'm going to multiply by 2 also. So let's just start by writing all this over. x, parentheses, 4x plus 3 plus 2, x squared plus 9, all I did was write the top. I'm going to get rid of the 2's because I'm multiplying by 2, equals 2 times all this stuff. 2 times 3 is 6. I'm going to write 6x, x x plus 2. All I've done from this step to this step is multiply by 2. On the left, the 2's disappeared. On the right, it's just 2 times all this stuff, and 2 times 3 is 6, so it just goes like that. Now let's distribute our x's in. x times 4x is simply 4x squared, plus 3 times x is 3x, plus 2 times x squared is simply 2x squared, plus 2 times 9 is 18, equals 6x times x is simply 6x squared, because you've got the 6 and x times x is x squared, plus uh, 6x times 2 is simply 12, and then you just carry the x, 12x. Okay? Now let's see if we can consolidate this stuff. This is a like term, and this is a like term, because x squared is in both, and they just have coefficients out in front. So 4 plus 2 is 6, so that means this is going to be 6x squared. Let's just continue writing the rest of the thing. Plus 3x plus 18 equals 6x squared plus 12x. Now notice I've got a 6x squared on both sides of the equal sign. And if I were to subtract both sides by 6x, they would both disappear. So this just goes away. They're gone. They're not even part of it anymore. Uh, now instead of rewriting it again, I'm just going to you just need to know that this is what's left on the left and this is what's left on the right. So what I want to do next is I want to, uh, well let's just be different. Let, instead of moving the 12 over here, let's just be a little different. Let's move the 3 over there. In order to move this 3x over here, I need to subtract both sides by 3x. So on the left, I'm just going to have 18 left over because 3x minus 3x is 0 equals 12x minus 3x. So I subtracted 3x from both sides. And that's going to be equal to 12x minus 3x is simply 9x. Okay? So what I'm left with is 18 equals 9x. And the way to get x by itself here is to divide both sides by 9 because I'm, I'm multiplying here, so I want to do the opposite, and that's division. So I'm going to divide that side by 9, and I'm going to divide that side by 9. These are going to go away. 9 divided by 9 is 1. So x is equal to 18 divided by 9, which is simply equal to 2. So x is equal to 2. That's going to about do it for this lesson today. Um, we've, we're learning how to simplify expressions to solve equations. And uh, it's really not that hard. You just need to take it one step at a time. Learn, Use your distributive properties. You need to be really strong on how to multiply and add things and just be very careful that when you try to add things together like this they need to have the same exponent the same letter the same variable everything needs to be exactly the same except for the little numbers out front only then can you add terms together and we'll see that as a continuing theme through the course and that about does it for this lesson